Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the first edition of the 2024 Fantasy Football Waiver Wire Report. I'm your host, Anthony Aniano. Happy to be with you here today as we take a look at the waiver wire for week one, the week before the season even starts. Players who maybe went undrafted in your fantasy league who can have value as the season goes along. Now, if you're new to the video, we use Yahoo roster percentages as our talking point. So I try to keep it to players at 50% or less in terms of being rostered, 50% or more available. We'll do this throughout the season. So you make sure you come here to Roto Ball's YouTube channel and check it out. Full disclosure, recording this on Sunday, September 1st. So obviously some numbers can change as there's still a few more drafts taking place between now and kickoff on Thursday night. But if you've already drafted, waivers are probably running in the next couple of days. So if there's been an injury, if you drafted early and there's been an injury or somebody's gotten hot, whatever it may be, you may want to get onto that waiver wire. So we'll start at the quarterback position. One quarterback who I feel has been underdrafted is Tennessee Titan quarterback Will Levis. 18% rostered. He came in and started about midway through the year last year. Threw for over 1,800 yards, eight touchdowns, four interceptions. Ran a little bit, 57 rushing yards. Did run for one touchdown. But why I would like Will Levis maybe as a backup quarterback to start the season with upside, I have him in multiple FFPC formats, super flex formats, as my third QB with the possibility of becoming my QB2 is because of the offense Tennessee has now put around them. It's a different Tennessee Titan team. Derrick Henry is gone. Tony Pollard, Taji Spears going to handle the work in the backfield. And they've invent, invested in the wide receiver position for Will Levis, giving him giving him every opportunities to succeed. DeAndre Hopkins is there. Looks like he'll be healthy for week one. They added Calvin Ridley. They added Tyler Boyd, formerly of the Bengals, and they still have Traylon Burks, for a former first round pick. So they're four deep at the wide receiver position. This is not the same Tennessee Titan team we've seen in the past that leans on the run game. They're gonna throw the ball this year. Will Levis is gonna be a key piece to this. You may wanna get in early on Will Levis while he's still available in 82% of Yahoo leagues. Now, a couple of running backs to be mindful of here as we approach uh, the start of the NFL season that may be available. Denver Bronco running back Jaleel McLaughlin. Broncos cut Samaje P. Ryan. Javante Williams is there as the number one. McLaughlin will be start the season listed as number two on the depth charts, but will see work. If you remember, McLaughlin was undrafted out of college, came to Denver last year, and had 76 carries. For 410 yards, okay, 5.4 yards per carry, way more productive than Javante Williams was last season. Also had 31 receptions on 36 targets, 160 yards, and a total of three touchdowns. He's a better pass catcher, in my opinion, than Javante Williams coming out of the backfield. Bo Nix may need to rely on that as the rookie gets acclimated to the NFL. He's only 33% rostered, making him available in 67 percent of leagues another running back to be mindful of is buffalo B bills rookie ray davis fourth round pick out of kentucky okay 17 percent rostered 83 percent available he is behind james cook on the depth chart as the running back too now james cook it's a different role for him for the full season if you remember last year buffalo started as a pass first offense Failed miserably at it. I shouldn't say failed miserably, but struggled offensively. Stefan Diggs was disappointing at times. He's now in Houston. Buffalo Bill offense is very different than it was. Remember mid-season then, they made the change, started leaning on the run game with James Cook, and their team took off a lot of success then once that change was made. Now with Stefan Diggs out, you have Keon Coleman um, and others at the wide receiver position. Khalil Shakir, Curtis Samuel, Dalton Kincaid still there. But this is a team that's going to look to run the ball more. Uh, James Cook, smaller running back. There were questions for years if he can handle the full workload. So they brought in Ray Davis as a fourth-round pick. Ray Davis, last season at the collegiate level in Kentucky, 1,129 rushing yards, 33 receptions for 323 receiving yards, and a combined 21 touchdowns. He averaged 5.7 yards per carry for Kentucky last year. He can either be a supplement to James Cook, or if something were to happen to Cook, he would accelerate to the number one running back role in this Buffalo Bills offense. They didn't draft him in the fourth round not to use him. 
Again, in deeper formats, if you have room at the end of the roster, he may be worth the end. Or if you have James Cook, I would definitely have him as a handcuff throughout the season. Ray, uh, Ray Davis available in 83% of leagues. If you're looking for wide receiver depth here after your draft, two names to be mentioned. And one of them I'm shocked that he was so underdrafted, the veteran Adam Thielen. Only rostered in 37, uh, 34% of leagues, makes him available in 66%. And I get it. Adam Thielen, not very interesting, kind of boring. We've done the Adam Thielen dance. And at the end of the day, though, he in a four-wide receiver league, he's still useful. Last season, 137 targets, 103 receptions, 1,014 yards. He will, may You could make a case that he was the only bright spot on that Carolina Panther offense last year. Now, I get it. They made investments through the draft with Xavier Leggett. They brought in Deontay Johnson of Carolina, but Adam Thielen is still there, and there's no guarantee that he will not be Bryce Young's go-to target with, with possession in the game on the line, per se, or they have to move the chains, whatever it is Carolina is looking to do. Now, we only had four touchdowns last year. Thielen, not known always as a touchdown machine, but he is a PPR monster potentially as a wide receiver four in deeper formats. My second wide receiver, this is the deep flyer, and I've drafted him in a bunch of 20-round FFPCs after round 16. So in, in standard 12-team leagues, he's probably available on the waiver wire as he's only rostered in 8% of leagues, and that's Quinton Johnson of the Los Angeles Char Chargers. You remember Quinton Johnson, the 2023 first-round pick by the Chargers, who had a disappointing year as a rookie, no doubt about it. 67 targets, 38 receptions, 431 yards, and two touchdowns. However, this cat, this Los Angeles Charger wide receiver room is completely done over. Mike Williams gone, Keenan Allen gone. They brought in the journeyman, DJ Chalk. How long does he stay on the field? Is he a viable option for Justin Herbert? Josh Palmer, who's been the wide receiver three there for a couple of years, some say he will become the wide receiver one now for the Chargers. They drafted Ladd McConkey. He'll play in the slot. But Quinton Johnson on the outside, does he pass DJ Chalk as the season goes along? Does Josh Palmer disappoint? As you can see, my point is there's a ton of questions involving that Charger wide receiver room, thus meaning it is wide open for someone to emerge. Now, I have stake in Josh Palmer in some spots. I did take flyers on Quinton Johnson in others. He's the upside boomer bust uh, waiver wire play if you want to go down that route. He's available in 92% of Yahoo leagues. So if you have dead roster space, if you're the person who drafted two defenses, if you're the person who drafted two kickers, drop one of them and add a flyer like Quinton Johnson to your team. Sit him on your bench and see if he pays off over the first couple of weeks of the season. And my final player to mention here today at the tight end position, New York Jet tight end Tyler Conklin. 20% rostered, 80% available in Yahoo leagues. Last season, basically without a quarterback, let's acknowledge that, 61 reception, 621 yards on 87 targets for the New York Jets. He now gets to work with Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers, who has worked with mediocre tight ends and turned them into something. You remember Robert Tanyan's 2020-11 touchdown season. Now, Garrett Wilson, Mike Williams are there for the New York Jets. Tyler Conklin playing a red zone role, an underneath role for the New York Jets. I'm willing to take a flyer on him, especially in PP on tight end premium formats. Two tight end formats, Tyler Conklin should be utilized as he has the best situation of his career paired with Aaron Rodgers at the quarterback position. Conklin, over the last two seasons, has averaged 60 receptions and 587 uh, yards without Aaron Rodgers at the quarterback position. I expect an uptick in both of those this year, this year, assuming Rodgers stays healthy throughout the season. So to recap, my fantasy football week one waiver wire players to consider adding at the quarterback position, Will Levis, running backs, Jaleel McLaughlin and Ray Davis, wide receivers, Adam Thielen and Quinton Johnson, and at the tight end position, Tyler Conklin. Folks, don't forget, head over to rotoballer.com right now, sign up, for the NFL Premium Pass and get it throughout the season. Use the promotional code ACES and save at checkout. Take advantage of that. The draft sync tools, the team uh, lineup optimizers, you name it, rotoballer.com has you covered. Whether it's DFS or season-long formats, sports betting, 
or whatever else sport you're looking for. Like and subscribe right here to the Road of Ola YouTube channel and download the app, Six Great Sports, right there on the app, all free. So take advantage of that as well. Give me a follow on Twitter at A, Fantasy, and we will see you next time right here on Roto Bowler Radio.